Welcome, everybody. Tonight is a benefit for Community Celebration of Place, and our main program is Elders Wisdom Children's Song. And, um, and what it's about is we're celebrating community tonight, raising funds for, uh, for Community Celebration of Place, and also going to take you all on sort of a musical journey and also a journey by film. Um, the night's going to start, actually, with a, uh, with a nine minute documentary. It's a music video honoring Helen Chichia. Um, uh, Helen Chichia is over here with her son Frank. She's waving. Stand up, Helen. <laughs> Helen Chichia. And her, her son Frank, who, uh, and we were, and we played soccer together in a team called the Augies Doggies when we were. Uh, he was a better player than me. But anyway, the elders get selected uh, within the schools. And uh, But in the case of Helen Chichia, uh, I sort of handpicked her, and you'll see why by the film. So, um, And the film was produced by Mr. David McDonald. Um, I don't know where David is right now. He, he's somewhere. He's shooting film tonight. Tonight's being filmed also. So thank you for coming. Enjoy the night. So this is a photograph of you with the children you spoke to and I worked with through Community Celebration of Place, Elders of Wisdom, Children's Song. What was this experience like for you? It was just lovely. I, everybody wanted to come and give me a hug, you know? It, they, it's just unbelievable how, how they, I felt like a celebrity. It was, um, I don't know, it was just, Overwhelming. My father, he was a farmer. He grew the grapes to make the wine. Out in the fields of California, he grew the grapes that grew on the vine. Words alone cannot restore lost years that won't come back no more. Only we could right the wrongs of the past in this song. Be kind to all that live. Day after the war, I didn't want to go to school, but the parent, my parents said, you have to go. So I went, and the day uh, President Roosevelt gave that day of infamy speech. And we went to social studies class, and uh, the teacher said, we are not going to study today. We're going to talk about the war. I do not want anybody to talk bad about Helen. She is a, she is a citizen of the United States, and that war had nothing to do with her. And this was, it made me, I, I started to have tears in my eyes, because that was one of the best things that I ever heard.
rounded up all of the Japanese Americans, uh, your mother was felt certain that, in fact, um, you would not be taken away, so she left the wedding pictures. Yes, and I said, oh, Mom, I, I need to save those. He said, no, it's going to protect our house, and we'll be back. I wanted to save them, so I wanted to keep them, and then we lost it all. From Japan, mother and father came to this land where I was born. Yesterday. But after Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, up, 1941. the life we loved was no more. A state which will live in infamy. It was like the grapes of wrath, the home we loved was ransacked mother left wedding pictures there to protect our home soon stripped bare be kind to all that live well you know everybody said that how come you just went without putting up a fuss well there's nothing you could do. When you went to register, there, the soldiers were all there with guns. And then, uh, you know, if you said anything or try to run, you get shot. And that's one of those scary things. People, people couldn't believe it. Said, oh, I didn't know they were running around with uh, guns. And I said, when we were on the train, every time we come into a little town, he said, put down the shade, you're going to get shot, you know? They weren't very nice to us, but, you know, we had the mind. Three sisters and I and one brother, mother and father forcibly removed into a camp behind barbed wire to live in a 20 square foot room with one toilet after another. No partitions, no privacy. Two bathrooms for several hundred American, Japanese. Be kind to all that live. Look at these photographs. Yeah. This is where I'm, this is um, our cabin right there. Oh my goodness. I recall you saying something to the effect that you felt sorry for the for the Pima girl yeah. for being stuck on the reservation, and she looked in at you and. Yeah. What did she say? She she, she looked at me and I said, "It's not me, but I, I understand." And she was telling me what she did. She used to ride the pony with her grandpa and see the little kids run to the barbed wire fence to reach over to try to touch the pony. And she says she, that stuck with her for many, many years. She was three years old and now she's a nurse for the Indian people. Father, he could not make the payments. On the farm, we lost it all. The grapes he grew were plowed under. The farm replaced by a mess hall. A Pima girl would ride bareback on her horse to the barbed wire fence. When she did, us kids came running, looking out towards the life we missed. Be kind to all that live. After all, all that you went through, um, you didn't really express anger or... That's why the children can't understand it, that they all went home and told their parents, I said, you know what she went through? She went through a lot and still she had a smile on her face, <laughs> <laughs> which, which made me feel pretty good, you know? The kids are so, I don't know, I didn't want to do all this kind of things, but what the people get out of this, the teachers say, you watch, they're gonna be great students later on, you know? 
because they listen to a story that if they had read it in one or two lines in the book, they could never get it. And it was somebody that survived the internment camp and was able to tell it. We made the best of a bad situation Three long years in the intern camp Kabuki plays standing ovations So many never did come back If I were to change tomorrow I would start here right now To help put an end to sorrow I believe we each know how Be kind to all that live You knew Mr. Maeda, didn't you? Yes, yes, yes we did. He was my, he was my little league coach. Yeah. Uh, and we just loved Mr. Maeda. And when I was young, it, it was probably the greatest joy of my life was baseball. And I think this whole thing begins with baseball because through Mr. Maeda, I really discovered something in myself that I wouldn't have discovered otherwise. Mm -hmm. And you know, not long after Little League, uh, my father passed away. And I was 13 and Mr. Maeda wrote me a letter of condolence and I rediscovered that when I was 40, mm -hmm. and I had children of my own, and I had forgotten that letter, and it brought me to tears. So I called him up, and he had moved to Ocean View, California, I believe, and he was, he was terminally ill. He was going to pass soon. And he asked me um, a favor. He asked, would I be willing to write a song about the Japanese internment experience? experience and none of us knew in our family that he was in fact in an internment camp in World War II mm -hmm. and I promised him that I would and for 10 years I tried to write that song and I don't know if you knew it but it wasn't until you came into the classroom that I was able to fulfill the promise to Mr. Maeda so I'm eternally grateful to you for that. No, I'm glad I'm real happy for that yeah.